6.22. And let's turn back now to the biggest story in the world today, the war in Gaza. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Israel will have overall security responsibility in Gaza for an indefinite period. And I think that is really significant. No moving in by the Palestinian Authority, no oversight by other Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia or Egypt, but a full-scale, semi-permanent occupation. And he made clear the fighting would go on. There will be no ceasefire, he said, in Gaza without the release of our hostages. As far as tactical little pauses, an hour here, an hour there, we've had them before. In order to enable goods, humanitarian goods to come in or our hostages, individual hostages, to leave, but I don't think there is going to be a general ceasefire. Now, that feels to me highly significant, marking the declaration of a longer war than any of us had perhaps anticipated. I'm joined now by the ambassador of the Palestinian Authority, Hussam Zomlot. Mr Zomlot, very good to see you in the studio. Can I start by asking for your reaction to what we've heard from Mr Netanyahu today? Absolutely unsurprising. I think Netanyahu has used the moment to implement an old new plan, which is the retaking of Gaza, the occupation of Gaza inside, because Gaza was under occupation from the outside, which is what we are seeing and witnessing in the West Bank. The settlers are wreaking havoc. There is rampage as we speak now. More than 164 Palestinians have been killed by uh, settler militias and by uh, army raids. And therefore, this is really implementing a plan that has been sitting on the desks of such a government. And by the way, uh, Andrew, we need to listen to these uh, uh, government officials. They've been saying this for years. And now, this is the moment for them to implement it and to finish the business. So you think that Netanyahu literally wants to expel the Palestinians entirely from Gaza? I don't think, I know. And this is happening. Look what they did this morning. Their tanks are not there to fight Hamas or anybody. Their tanks are there to oversee the mass expulsion of hundreds of thousands. And they have done so already in the last few days. Now you have more than a million people who have moved their, leave their home from the north to the south and they were told you will move to the, you know, a safe haven, a safe zone, shelters. And you know Israel has has, has bombarded 50 UN shelters in the south and killed hundreds. Yeah. So this is a plan to move people from the north to the south until comes up a, 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 a moment they push whatever left in the south towards Sinai, the Sinai desert. This is a replay of 1948, the Nakba. They have the playbook. We have the memory. We know what yeah. they did then and we know what they're doing now. Um, what they would say, because we have to try to reach across and, and understand what the other people are thinking, is that Hamas is so embedded in the population in Gaza that it is impossible to eradicate Hamas and therefore impossible to eradicate the imminent terrorist threat against Israel without doing something like this. What we've been saying for a long time, what we need to eradicate is the occupation and the colonization and the besiegement of one uh, of more than two million people over 16 pe- years uh, uh, period and what we need to really focus on is the true long-term perspective of giving and attaining uh, a state of peace and security for all uh, uh, there is no military solution to, to a situation of a people struggle there is no military solution it didn't happen in south africa it didn't happen anywhere else without going into details and it will not happen in palestine mm. there is only a political and legal solution and so far so long as Israel refuses to do so with the backing of its Western backers, it will only revert to violence. And this is the story for 75 years. Inflicting repression and oppression by mass scale violence on the occupied people. This is the only solution Netanyahu has and this is the only solution all previous uh, previous Israeli governments has. This very tragic moment, Andrew, is also an opportunity to look back, zoom out, and really turn this unprecedented human suffering and pain. I mean, this morning, I was shocked to my core to read the accounts, see the videos of people buried under the rubble, and now hungry dogs are eating the corpses of children, of babies. No medical supplies, no medical staff, nobody is able to reach these people buried under the rubble, and they have died because nobody reached them, not only because they were bombarded by Israel. This is almost, Israel has almost inflicted on the Palestinian people an Armageddon. And the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, in his first televised speech a few days ago, he quoted the Amalek. 
you know what's the Amalek, Andrew? I'm sure you know what's the Amalek. He has used genocidal rhetoric before they started their genocide in Gaza. This is a grave moment, so, not only on the Palestinians. It's a grave moment on us, on the region, and look at the region and what is happening. And it's a grave moment on every single actor of international politics and international law, including the United Kingdom. I don't want to undermine anything of what you've been saying there, but I do want to ask you about the West Bank. Right. Because there has been you know, constant um, settlements there. Uh, people um, from Western governments and from Western politics, we had Wes Streeting and sitting in that seat a few moments ago, talk always about a two-state solution. And many of them really mean it. But there can't be a two-state solution while the West Bank um, is being settled in this way. Do you find anyone in the international community who listens to you seriously about the problems in the West Bank? They listen and they talk, but they don't act. We have been listen, hearing a lot of lip service from politicians, including in the UK. We are pro two-state solution. It was the PLO that came to the Oslo peace process, as you know and remember, uh, Yasser Arafat. Yeah. And we have committed to the three requirements by us of the international community. Accept the two states, renounce violence, and you know go for negotiations, and accept international consensus and resolutions. Mm -hmm. And we have been doing this to the dot until now. And the world told us, told us 30 years ago, should you do this, we will deliver Israel. Israel will end its settlements and occupation, and we will enforce and guarantee accountability. We did our three commitments. Israel never abided by one, even one day for so, all this. So what I'm saying is, well, what I'm saying is politicians, and I've had many of them, sit with us and give us, you know, some yeah. uh, sad, sad uh, faces and some words of sympathy. But when it comes to action, I have not seen one action since Israel started building settlements again since we signed Oslo. Now, your organization, Fatah, uh, fought a war against Hamas, and you made it absolutely clear you think there can be no peace settlement with this Netanyahu government and its, its allies in, at, the, at the heart of Tel Aviv. Do you also think there could be no settlement while Hamas is still embedded, given what they have been saying about wiping out Israel and carrying on these attacks? Hamas is not the Palestinian people, and Hamas is not, not part I'm, I'm of the Palestinian uh, political system. The PLO is the legitimate sole representative of the Palestinian people. It has the majority of Palestinian political... Ambassador, I am, I'm asking specifically Israel, about Hamas. No, Israel can only make peace with the legitimate sole representative of the Palestinian people and you are looking at one of them and we are here and we are ready should Israel accept the absolute basic requirement of rolling back their occupation of ending their repression and oppression of our people of ending this colonial settlement expansion that has left no place no land no resources of ending the apartheid system that they have imposed a system of racial domination that is yes. very well documented by amnesty international yeah, by human rights watch in the u.s by numerous israeli human rights and palestinian human rights organizations israel has got to understand it cannot have security on its own only. It cannot have uh, uh, rights and the other uh, side <laughs> do not have rights. This is a moment. This is a moment of truth. This is a defining moment. Mm. And you know what? Let me say this. We have warned from day one all of international actors, including the UK government, that do not give Israel a card, a card blanche. Do not give, give Israel a, a green light. It will use it in the most devastating criminal way possible and look what they have done and number two okay. israel is now after the international system they have bombarded 50 u.n premises they have killed 72 u.n uh, uh, employees and staff members and they are now literally literally after the u.n general uh, secretary so this is the defining moment in terms of israel was created in the mid 40s by the u.n and the u.n was created at, at around the very same time 75 years both of them and both of them have been in odds with each other for all the all this time this is about time that we ally Israel to international rules. And I don't see any serious uh, 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 political uh, uh, statements and action by, by London, by Washington, by any other major Western capital towards enforcing law on Israel. Israel has been made the exception to every rule. And today, it has been such a flagrant exception and dent to our humanity and dent to our morality. All right, Ambassador, there's so much we could talk about. We've run out of time for now. Thank you very much for coming in and talking to LBC tonight.